Microgasification stoves. There's one of them that model is sitting on the front table up in here. That's the Champion stove made in India. These are the variety of the different sizes. Gas burning stoves that make their own gases from low value biomass fuels and at low cost for the stove and the fuel. When you define them as gas burning stoves, it puts them in a different category. It happens to come from solid, dry biomass as the uh, source of those gases. So it's in the, uh, a cross-sectional diagram into here. The fuel is in the inner chamber, lighted at the top. Pyrolysis proceeds on down through. It reaches the end of it. We have charcoal there. We can dump it out. You're familiar with that process. Air, primary air in, secondary air comes in up at the top, that type of thing. I, uh, there's lots of things out and written up about that. And it, uh, okay, these are a variety of the TLUG gasifier stoves. Top row, all of those have fans in them. I do not agree with the definition that Larry, uh, that not Larry, that um, Dean uses fan stove. If you put a fan and blow it onto a three stone fire, does that make it a fan stove? I'm not too sure. I mean, I'm a little bit more fussy about where the air goes and how, etc. cetera. So um, not every stove because it has a fan does it, but fans do have a major impact and major advantages. So these are just a variety of them. Uh, where do you put the, uh, the, the pot? This case here, this is the Uganda one. It's up on the table here. This is, uh, the pot is on top of the stove. Here, the, the, the gas fires underneath, the, the, gas, the flames come up under this pot, continue over under the second pot, and continue over then to a chimney and on up. In this case here, it's sitting on top of a tripod. Basically, all options are possible. Commonly, I am talking about gasifiers and I'm showing something and they say, well, where do you put the pot? Uh, use your imagination, put it any way that you want. We have made these stoves with plancha tops and with uh, two pot tops and, and all of the different combinations along in with it. It's very versatile in there. Now, the T-char variation. It's been mentioned today and uh, um, Bob Fairchild gave a very good presentation about that. And it is represented up here on the table. Also, there are a couple out there that he had. Picking it up on it. We'll mention some of this about there. This is only seven months old. It is a, a few, uh, in recent months, we've made different variations on it. The daily innovations coming into it. So if this is, when we talk about the cutting edge, and I do recommend, or I do encourage anybody to become interested in it, get involved with it. The, in the picture here, that is a, a uh, uh, it's made in Haiti, but it is the classic Kenyan ceramic Jiko, okay? And uh, when we put on a little grill grate inside there, the top sits upright in there, it's filled up with fuels, you run it as a T-LUD, and when it's done, now there's a, a char inside, you raise this up vertically, you see it's open at the bottom in here, you raise it up vertically and the charcoal spreads out. You will see that in operation tomorrow at the lighting of the stoves and things like that. At that time, when it's ready up, you take these little pot rests, flip them over, put the pot back onto it. Yes, you have to pick up the pot and move it around a little bit, uh, but we're getting the advantage of a heavy, nice, strong and solid uh, ceramic uh, stove base. People talk about stabilities and things like that. An interesting idea, Bob, that came from somebody here. This flap should be able to be used over here to lock the two together. It it's just engineering now, folks. The idea is out there. How does this come up and clip up and things like that? It'll happen. Somebody's going to do it because it's nice if it doesn't, if it will all stick in together. Okay. The uh, uh, now that is for cooking. You change it, and the only thing I changed was I blocked out some stuff into here. We put a bucket underneath, a pan, a ceramic uh, bowl or something like that, big enough to receive the char. And then when you lift it up, all that char is in that bowl, and you just put a lid onto it, 
and it extinguishes it. You can put water into it, etc. Making biochar. So this is T char for making of biochar. The other one is with regard to cooking. It goes both ways. We're using the letter T to represent the T LUD component of charcoal making, charcoal stoves, and things like that. So I will now starting to refer to T fuels as fuels that are appropriate for T LUDs. Okay. Start seeing the letter T out in front, so you know it's, it's sh small and chunky, dry, etc. But it fits in there and it works out okay. Um, current status check emissions. This is an old chart. You've seen it around carbon monoxide, the, the uh, car uh, particulate matter. This is the these are the readings in here that we had in terms of the T LUD stoves. Pyrolyzing, burning off the char, or not burning off the char, you actually have lower emissions in, uh, into that from those tests. In contrast, three stone fire, here's the rocket stoves, which are, in my opinion, the very best of the stick wood stoves. They'll be around for a long, long time. Big future on them also. Now, char the charcoal stoves, particulate matter, that's, that's why they use it indoors so it should be ventilated on your porch or something, your veranda, but it's used in urban areas and throughout Africa. And this is so it's not so smoky. Well, I see that the T-LUD stoves have less emissions than does the from a particular matter than what you have from charcoal stoves. And up there, of course, that's the carbon monoxide, which is the big no-no. And again, T-LUDs are, in my opinion, superior to charcoal stoves. It was on the basis of that that we started this project. Krista Roth and I received some funding and we uh, did some T-char stoves, no, not T-char stoves, some T-LUD stoves for charcoal users in urban areas. One group is, it was in uh, Malawi, another smaller group was in uh, Mozambique. And that then led on to this thing where we came up with the, with the T-char. So getting that idea of bringing these stoves into the urban context, which is to displace the charcoal burning stoves and therefore trying to cut off at the, at the source, at the origin, the devastation, the deforestation and stuff that's associated with making charcoal the traditional ways, et cetera. That chart. I, I'm summarizing it as micro gasifiers have the lowest emissions of any solid fuel cookstoves. I don't know any other candidates. Uh, happy to discuss them in, in different ways. The issue, in my opinion, is resolved. The data that's coming in, further testing, this is on refinements of things. It'll also show verification of what is already known in quantitative terms. I know that Jim Jetter is testing things, and he is going to have some results. And if the result is way up on the chart in the bad things, I'm going to go look at it and say, let's redo it. Something was wrong. Something else was wrong. That is not representative. And so we have these things. Now, a question that still remains, and Jay can comment on this, the emission, the, are the emissions at levels acceptable for solving health problems of indoor air pollution? Only when physicians know for sure. I can't make that judgment, and you can't make that judgment yet either. How about public health studies? When public health studies say that it's okay. All right, got to change the wording on there or something. I appreciate Okay, that little. Don't trust physicians. Don't trust <laughs> physicians. All right, good. All right. Now, this says to me. When we are going to have studies done, the next round of studies with these stoves and the stuff like that, let's put stoves out there that have low emissions. It's not just that the stove has a chimney and it gets it out of the house, but if these stoves are not included in those studies in some way, shape, or form, we're missing the boat. We're not able to come to that conclusion. It'll just be set aside for one more round. I am advocating let's get the T-LUD stoves and variations of them, the micro gasifiers, into those studies and do it right away. Okay? Put in the other stoves too. Now this is the discussion about emissions and uh, that part, but I want to say that 
Low emissions do not really drive the stove efforts. Yes, we want people to be healthy, but there are stoves out there which are healthy, and it's not getting attention, it's not getting people into it. The, uh, uh, the same applies to the making of biochar. There are enthusiasts for the health issues and for the biochar issues. However, their enthusiasm is not enough to move these stoves into the mainstream type of stuff. There's other issues besides that. They are important, but they are not the driving forces. Now, let's go to the topic of efficiencies of stoves. Thermal transfer efficiency, or heat transfer efficiency. 20, all stoves, 20 to 40% is good. It depends more on stove structure than it depends on the combustion device. You compare a three stone fire that has a skirt around it, you know, for the, the types of all these extras, and put another stove out there which has none of those additional helps in order to get the heat transfer up, and the three stone fire starts looking better, and the other one doesn't look so good. Let's compare apples with apples and oranges with oranges. Uh, stoves which are tested, a, okay, again, a stove defines with it the structure that is going to hold the pot. And it is not dependent on whether it's a rocket elbow or whether it is a tea lud stove. Let's have exactly the same stove structure and two or three or four different heat sources in order to make the comparisons. And that way, we're, we're, we're holding constant the stove structure arrangement. And let's encourage the people who are doing the tea lud stoves to have better stove structures. They're not exempt from it. We need to get those in and, and better. In terms of combustion efficiencies, combustion efficiencies, and Larry um, uh, Dean uh, teaches this all the time in the stove camp. Most, we burn the wood. It's, it's, way, it's, it's clean. You're going to make your, your changes and stuff in stove structures. But 1% of emissions is enough to drive everybody out of the room. That amount of emissions coming off would be a smoke bomb type of thing. Just 1%, one, just one a small percent. In terms of its energy content, it's a very small number. One person light a cigarette on one side of the room over here, and it'll be known on this side. I mean, we detect those kinds of emissions very, very clearly and quickly. So you don't need very much of it. But efficiencies are not the focal issue also. Yes, we say oh, it's got to be 99% this, and it's got to all these types of things. However, in the end, that doesn't cut it with the lady that's in her barefoot, in her hut, taking care of three kids and uh, doesn't have much money and there's other factors that go along with it. So the, uh, uh, the real focal issues are convenience for users, fuels, types, supplies, and costs, stove costs for producing the stove and the retail cost of it, and then the issue of acceptance. Acceptance, there's inertia in it, tremendous inertia socially, culturally, in everything. And then also the marketing that'll come to that. So these four here I need to address with regard to the tea lud stoves.